Well, I'm sure that I have canceled MSNBC talking head Joy Reid before on the show. I can't remember specifically at this moment. All of the ignoramuses discussed during the daily cancellation segment blend together in my mind, forming one big, loud ball of stupid. I can only assume that Joy has been featured multiple times because she is so aggressively, obnoxiously terrible in every way that a person can be terrible. You know, there are evil people who think they're virtuous. There are dumb people who think they're smart. Joy Reid falls into both categories. She even looks the part with the bleach blonde, short cropped hair and the permanent scowl. She, you know, looks like the kind of middle-aged woman who yells at the pizza delivery guy because the pizza doesn't have pepperoni on it, even though it's not the delivery guy's fault and even though she didn't order pepperoni. The point is, I'm not especially a fan of Joy Reid and I'm sure that has come through in the past, but today we have to pay her some special attention once again, unfortunately. And in fact, we're covering this in the opening monologue rather than the closing because the Joy Reid segment in question that we'll talk about uh, takes a certain turn that makes it even more relevant and, in fact, disturbing. So Joy took to her low-rated cable news show last night to call out the alleged racist conservatives who have been engaging in alleged racist conspiracy theories surrounding the Baltimore bridge collapse. We talked about the conspiracy theory angle yesterday, but Joy takes this in a different direction. It would probably be easiest just to play the segment and walk through all the many ways that she gets things wrong. Uh, So here it is. A shame on those people who want to make something out of this that isn't there. They have this boogeyman philosophy, and if it's black or brown, it's something that they've got a target on. Yeah. I just think that is just totally uncalled for at a time like this. That was Maryland Congressman Kwesi Fume last night on this very show, talking about the rampant conspiracies being hawked by the right about Tuesday's tragic bridge collapse in Baltimore. It has been a grab bag of right-wing grievances, barely coded racism, and flat-out lies. Noted Jewish space lasers and QAnon conspiracist Marjorie Taylor Greene suggested the disaster was the result of an intentional attack, perhaps by the space lasers. Well, actually, she didn't suggest that it was an intentional attack. And even if she did, that's not a conspiracy theory. Intentional attacks on infrastructure are a well-known threat. There's nothing outlandish about suggesting that it may have happened, but she's not even suggesting. The tweet that Joy briefly flashes on the screen says, quote, There should be a serious investigation into the horrifying tragedy of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland. Is this an intentional attack or an accident? Praying for the victims, survivors, and families. Now, which part of that tweet is conspiratorial or outlandish? In fact, I can't imagine a more measured and normal way to respond in a situation like this. Is Joy Reid suggesting that it's inappropriate to even wonder whether the incident was intentional? Well, that's odd because the people investigating the crash also wondered about that. Now, so far, they're saying that they don't think that it was intentional, but that's obviously an angle they pursued immediately because that's a normal thing to wonder about. So are they conspiracy theorists too? Joy doesn't say. Let's continue. But the most idiotic and racist theories had to do with their newest boogeyman, diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. A Republican congressional candidate in Florida tweeted that DEI did this. And a right-wing blue check account that's been boosted by Elon Musk in the past just blew straight past the dog whistling, tweeting to its 276,000 followers, quote, Baltimore's DEI mayor commenting on the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's going to get so, so much worse. Prepare accordingly. The post included a clip of Baltimore's black mayor, Brandon Scott. I, I cannot believe I have to say this. Brandon Scott was elected with 70% of the vote in 2020, in a city that is 61% black. So by right-wing logic, a diversity hire would have been a white man, which of course is what they want. Only the white Christian men may have the things. And at this point, it's evident what they mean by DEI, right? Okay, it means black people. It's the reason the right complained about critical race theory. It's not fashionable to be openly racist anymore in America, unlike what they call the good old days. So referring to a black mayor as a DEI mayor gets the point across, right? So fellas, why don't just say what you mean? You can't stand black people. We get it. You've been heard. Well, we can't stand you specifically, uh, but you're an individual person. You're not an entire race. Now, a few points here. Um, Number one, it is... Fashionable, it is fashionable to be openly racist in this country, just not against black people. But Joy Reid herself proves, and what comes next in this very segment that we're watching will again demonstrate, that racism against white people is indeed very fashionable. And second, she's showing us tweets to prove whatever point she's trying to make. 
Now, as we've seen, the first tweet that she displayed from Marjorie Taylor Greene totally contradicted her point. She wants to demonstrate the conservatives in the main are being wildly conspiratorial about this. So she showed us a tweet where Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene was completely measured and utterly reasonable. And next we see a tweet from some congressional candidate I've never heard of. And then we see one from an anonymous account called I am yes, you are no, with a cartoon profile photo. You know, that guy, that that world famous conservative thinker named I am yes, you are no. You know, $20 barely gets you anything these days. You can't get a burger and fries for less than that. But uh, what about uh, at the gas pump? I mean, you could get maybe a quarter tank of gas. But do you know what $20 will get you? From the cell phone company I use, Pure Talk, you can get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of 5G data for just 20 bucks a month. Pure Talk gives you the same quality of service as your current cell phone provider, but for half the cost, the average family spend, uh, saves almost $1,000 a year, all with no contracts and no activation fees. You can switch to Pure Talk and Keep the phone and phone number you currently use, or you can take advantage of their great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids. Making the switch is incredibly easy. Their U.S. customer service team can help you join Pure Talk in as little as 10 minutes. Choose to spend your hard-earned money with a wireless company that shares your values, supports our military and veterans, creates American jobs, and refuses to advertise on fake news networks. Stop spending ridiculous amounts of your uh, on your phone plan. Go to puretalk.com slash Walsh. Right now, my listeners can get an additional 50% off on their first month. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh. Now, obviously, Joy is correct that it doesn't require DEI to get a black man elected mayor in Baltimore. Every Baltimore mayor for the past 30 years, except one, has been black. They've also all been terrible, by the way, as the city has plunged into decades of crime, violence, and rampant drug use. But that's a topic for another day. But she is right that, you know, the joking nickname given to this guy by an anonymous cartoon Twitter account is not technically accurate. Now, as to the suggestion that DEI might have something to do with the bridge collapse itself, that may also not be accurate. We still don't know. We may never know for sure. There are many factors that played into this incident, factors that are still being investigated. And at this point, it's just not possible to say for sure whether or not DEI policies played a part somewhere along the line. But if people immediately speculate about the role of DEI in incidents like this, it's not because those people are so terrible. It's because DEI is so terrible. The fact remains that DEI policies have deliberately and systematically lowered standards across the board in virtually every industry, all in the name of making every industry less white. That is a fact. It has happened. It is happening. Joy Reid supports and promotes those policies. And now we are witnessing the collapse of competence across the country because of it. Now, that doesn't mean that every catastrophe is linked to this campaign of destruction in the name of diversity, but it does mean that it's perfectly reasonable to wonder whether any particular catastrophe is linked to it. And it also means that, inevitably, some people will draw that connection even before it has been factually established. That's what happens when you come up with a racist policy that intentionally makes everything worse in every conceivable way. So the the problem here is the policy, not the random Twitter accounts that Joy Reid is crying about. But it wasn't enough to have Joy Reid cry about them on her own. She also brought the mayor of Baltimore on the air to respond to all of this. Now, You would think that the man who is the mayor of Baltimore has a a crisis to attend to and would be too busy to spend time doing an interview to respond to a joking tweet from an anonymous Twitter account. That's what you would think. That's what you you would like to hope. But you would be wrong. Watch. Well, I think, listen, uh, uh, I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only uh, uh, straight, wealthy white men should have a saying anything. We've been the boogeyman from them since the first day they brought us to this country. And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. And the fact that I don't uh, believe in their uh, untruthful and wrong ideology and i am very proud proud of my heritage and who i am and where i come from scares them uh, because me being at my position means that their way of thinking their way of life of being comfortable and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk and they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life Okay, I'm going to skip right past the mayor's statement that it requires courage to say the N-word. Something tells me that if any white person did say it in his presence, he would have a lot of things to say in response, and praising them for their courage would not be one of those things. But 
We don't have time to harp on that because the bigger headline here is this part. He says, quote, me being in this position means that their way of thinking, their way of life, of being comfortable while everyone else suffers is at risk. And they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life. So just to recap the situation, the mayor of Baltimore, in the midst of a major disaster, has taken the time to go on a political talk show to play the victim because someone tweeted something mean about him. And then in the middle of this little pageant, he proceeds to issue a threat and even declares that it is his his purpose. His purpose is to put at risk the livelihood of these people he's threatening. Now, you might hope that, again, his primary purpose right now, you would hope, is to figure out what to do about the fact that a bridge that carried 30,000 commuters a day is now lying at the bottom of the Patapsco River. But, but apparently not. Apparently that's not his purpose. And who is the they that he's talking about here? Who's the they? Is it that one guy? Is it the one guy with the cartoon profile? Is that who you talk? Is that what this is all about? Is that guy? But you said they. I don't think he identifies as non-binary, so he must be talking about more than one person. He says that their way of life is at risk, and they should be afraid. Now, I suppose the most charitable interpretation is that he's talking about people that he deems racist. Even that would be disturbing. An elected official, a mayor in particular, should not be threatening anyone for having thoughts he disagrees with. That's what we're talking about here. Much less should he be declaring that they should be afraid and that he intends to put their way of life at risk. But, but it's worse than that. Because Mayor Brandon Scott of Baltimore has obviously demonstrated himself to be a typical far-left race-baiting Democrat. And, and, and we would know that even without these statements on MSNBC simply because that's the only kind of person who gets elected to lead a city like Baltimore you know, these days. Far-left Race-baiting Democrats believe, and we'll tell you this explicitly if they're in an honest mood, which, I mean, most of the time they aren't, but they will say this explicitly, that all white people are inherently racist. And they certainly believe that all white conservatives are inherently racist, which means that any threat issued obliquely against racists is intended by them for a particular racial group. So this was an anti-white statement, and let's make no mistake about that just as DEI is anti-white. Which means that Mayor Scott really has earned the moniker DEI mayor after all, just perhaps for a slightly different reason. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.